focusing uh, some of the work that we've been doing and also uh, focus a little more on some of the land care type of issues that we might be able to partner and work together in, in uh, delivering in the future. Um, so it's interesting that Nepal, uh, obviously, you know, is straddled uh, or is structured between China and India. Uh, the highest point is Mount Everest at 8850, it sort of grows a little bit every year. Uh, but it's also interesting to note, and a lot of people don't realise that uh, the bottom corner is only about 64 metres above sea level. Um, there are about 28 million people that live in the country, and uh, I understand geographically two and a half Nepal's fit in Victoria. About 82% Buddhist, uh, sorry, Hindu, and the rest are, are Buddhist and a smattering of others. The, the stuff about life expectancy, most of us have gone past that, so that's really good. Um, the sanitation, children's work, safe water, are all constant issues across the country. Uh, and like any developing country, they are always there at the forefront for survival for many. And uh, three quarters of an hour ago, the COVID cases were 144,000 uh, and uh, 791 deaths. So they are also struggling with the COVID uh, and it's also impacting on tourism. It's impacting on uh, transportation around the around the country itself, uh, accessibility. Uh, there is a cry from a lot of people about food and food provision. So there's been certainly a lot of work done by community organisations to try and provide food for many. Kamendu is obviously the, uh, the big city and that's uh, surrounded by hills. So therefore it's very uh, smoggy and polluted, uh, large, uh, cramped, and uh, under, uh, under, what's the word, infrastructurized. Um, you know, it has uh, a lot of the growth that has happened, but the infrastructure hasn't caught up with it. Uh, there is, uh, as I said before, a really strong following of the Hindu faith. Uh, and here is the Bagmati River on the left with uh, uh, where they would cremate the bodies on, you know, as soon as they have passed, pretty much in 48 hours, it has to happen. Um, there are a number of pyres that are, you know, going at the same time. So that's all squished into the river. This then leads down to the Ganges uh, and because uh, the holy water is, is where they want to end up. On the other hand, you've got uh, Buddhists uh, who uh, follow the, uh, the faith at Bawadanath uh, and other places, but this is the largest uh, temple or stupa as they call it. Uh, and this is where, um, you know, thousands of Buddhist followers would come uh, to do their, their prayers and their, their rounds every day. Um, and it's a, an amazing, an amazing place. You obviously you can't go to Nepal without seeing a hill or two. Uh, and there are eight over 8,000 meters. So, you know, you've got some pretty amazing scenes. This is just outside of Pokhara. Um, and you've got you know, wonderful opportunities to do some amazing photo, photo photography, if that's the sort of thing that you want to do. 2015, we uh, were confronted by um, Anzac Day here, uh, but also at 11 o'clock or thereabouts, uh, an earthquake that was 7.8 on the Richter scale that had deaths and injuries and affected 8 million people across the country. So 29 million people across the country 8 million of those were affected directly uh, with some 800,000 homes that uh, uh, were destroyed at the time. Um, we, uh, we went in with uh, some teams uh, in the months after the earthquakes. There were one in April, one in May. Uh, this lady we met uh, in an area that was close to the centre of the first earthquake. Uh, fairly uh, interesting face and lots of stories to tell in that face, but you know, the crazy part about it is that she's still living in this temporary shelter that we built for her in 2015. Uh, and today she still happens to live there because the system uh, just hasn't been able to uh, connect and manage and support a lot of people who, who have been impacted by the earthquakes. Just recently, landslides. Uh, this is in a community that we do a lot of work um, and uh, as you can see, 30 homes lost, 450 people that were displaced, all within a matter of, of minutes. 
uh, but that was because we have uh, monsoon time at this time of the year, although the monsoon is just about ready to be over. But the monsoon has uh, affected lots of places with landslides each year, and therefore that's uh, an increasing issue uh, for the survival. This is a photo in, um, in Gorka. So you can see this massive amount of soil that's been fractured. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's only two months ago that this happened. Uh, so it's been ready to go, obviously, but you can see that the effect of the earthquake, uh, the unsettling of the stability of the ground and, and the rain that comes with monsoons equals some pretty, pretty uh, devastating stuff that's going to impact on the villages, people down on the bottom. Policy Action Abroad, as uh, Andrea mentioned earlier, came out of my involvement with the Jiku Emirates Award. Uh, we're a registered chair. Uh, we are totally voluntary uh, with uh, five board members. Uh, similar to you, that we uh, rely on people all over the countryside to support what we do and how we do it. Um, we are on about humanitarian ventures, whatever ventures might mean, but it's also about taking volunteers that uh, can be involved in sharing their skills and their talents uh, with uh, communities that we arrange projects with. So. Somewhere along the way, we've uh, worked with about 70 plus project partners, both here in Australia, as well as over there. We've involved in uh, over 180 or thereabouts uh, projects. And we believe that we've been able to invest uh, about 3 million Australian dollars into the Nepali economy, because what happens is the participants pay a fee with us. Uh, we then uh, ship all that money over there, the place for their food, accommodation, transport, uh, resources that we need to do the projects. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really about ensuring that the money that we have donated, 100% of that goes into the country and supports the projects that we're involved in. We are totally committed to a community development model. Uh, my background is obviously community development and youth work, but it's also about the board that we have and our, and our supporters certainly are about ensuring that what we do is driven by communities. And that's very similar, obviously, with uh, global land care. The teams that we take uh, can either construction or health related, teacher education. Obviously, you've got to go to Nepal if you're going to do a bit of a trek. Um, and then community action, which is a bit of a bitzer, I suppose, in people who are just willing to have a crack uh, and have a go. We've got a couple of major projects that we want to explore, and we are exploring with Rotary and we want to explore with land care. Um, many times, uh, some of the sessions that we run by women, for women, are uh, out underneath the tree. So that's not unusual in, in uh, countries like Nepal uh, because they don't have facilities to, uh, to meet. But uh, these ladies uh, at the front are nurses from uh, up in Nil area in Victoria. Uh, and they've been over there with us uh, in sharing women's health. Uh, and uh, associated to that hygiene packs for girls, uh, which allows them to be uh, independent and, and have some dignity about uh, where they are each month. Schools are, are basic, some places. This is one that we uh, supported to uh, be constructed after the earthquake. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's a situation of being able to respond when we can, uh, with the limited resources we can, to ensure that we can uh, support local communities. Uh, as uh, Pam, I think, mentioned earlier about the growth and development in New Zealand, you know, where it took four or five years for things to happen with land care, we the same, you know, would spend a lot of time with communities in looking at their needs, in talking to them about their ownership and their responsibility. This building has taken about, well, certainly two years to, to build and about four years of discussions to, uh, to get at this point. But this is a building that replaces one that was demolished during an earthquake. Uh, and uh, it allows this community to now have a meeting space to work in. You obviously can't go to Nepal without some trekking, uh, and this is up near Everest, where if you want to get a view of Everest, you have to skim around this uh, hill on the left, which is called Kalapatar or Black Mountain, uh, and that's where, uh, if you've got a camera, that's where you're going to get some good photos. When we look at Nepal, there's uh, obviously a high dependency on agriculture to survive. Um, the production is, is intimate, uh, sorry, it, it, it is based on, on the weather and on the conditions of the soil and on to the 
um, a situation where you know the production will vary from year to year. And we're now looking at an issue now where there's just not enough production for the population that is growing. There's many malnutrition and, uh, and there's certainly a high number of young people that are impacted by that. And again, that's not terribly different to many other developing countries. The, uh, the crops that are grown, you know, obviously are for food staples or uh, uh, pulses or seeds. Uh, there is obviously some good tea down the eastern end. Uh, there's some uh, growth on the Terai, is the lower part of Nepal, the bottom edge in the uh, Indian border, uh, is where there's a lot of production of the food uh, for the country. There's a number of uh, um, products that are brought in through India, but again, you know, in trying to develop and grow. Uh, Nepal is very much a uh, subsistence farming community um, and uh, a lot of work is done in that area to try and sustain what they have. Livestock is important and that varies from, you know, a chook here or a goat there to a poultry farm to goat rearing to whatever it might be. And we noticed that more recently uh, fish uh, have become uh, a product that, you know, we, I don't know whether I'd eat them, but the locals uh, every now and again have you know that rice planting time is really crucial. Everyone chips in and does. Terrace everywhere. Um, just an amazing part of the, the, the time of the year when when communities get together and support each other to, uh, to build a village through their farming. Uh, and that's really crucial in, in uh, every community that has. But you can see the John Deere ta tractor. You know, the majority of Nepal still is dependent on a buffalo, still is dependent on animals to uh, to plough the fields. And uh, and obviously uh, my mate here gets very muddy and happy to share the mud. These photos are in Kathmandu. So you've got areas in, in big city, the big city of Kathmandu, where there's still production at a local level uh, because again, you know, the, the cropping needs to be done to ensure that the community uh, can survive with some basic products. Uh, markets everywhere um, and uh, you know or, organic is is a word that we would use here but you know obviously they would use it uh, less because they just do it every day uh, they're straight out of the ground on the side of the road um, and uh, and ready to eat whether it be uh, pulses uh, fruit uh, or green green leafy veggies there are some challenges obviously facing the country a bit hard to read the map in the middle but I didn't know how to split it up easily but the challenges that the country faces is about water about climate change forest management knowledge and i'll come back to that uh, machinery i mentioned buffalo um, and then you've got uh, food security for the future um, natural disasters as we said has been you know impacting and labor uh, is the sort of stuff that has an impact on local communities water left corner top is uh, the fact that we have increasing number of hydro stations that are being built throughout Nepal um, by 15 of those, I believe, uh, by China uh, with an investment there of infrastructure. But what it does is that it uh, damages the river downstream because the fishing, uh, the cropping, the whatever source that comes out of that stream all of a sudden turns into a trickle rather than a ready, a, a steady stream throughout the year. Uh, we have floods, earthquakes and landslides that I've mentioned before. And we also have a, an increasing uh, amount of deforestation. Uh, and, uh, and that obviously is affecting uh, where we are with landslides and the uh, stability of the land. The labor forces, uh, thousands and thousands of young guys particularly, are encouraged to go to Gulf countries to work, Malaysia, the Philippines, Indonesia as well, uh, where they seek fame and fortune. Uh, but the reality is that uh, there's too many suicides, there's uh, money coming back, but uh, that's not uh, supporting the local communities to survive. The earthquake village in the middle is uh, one that, you know, is probably about 60% of the community are menless uh, because they've all gone overseas or they're past. 
Uh, the bottom corner is about knowledge and our Nepali partners uh, throughout uh, the areas that we work uh, are really thirsting for knowledge and information that can help them produce better crops, produce uh, a, a sustainable future and also uh, provide uh, alternatives to what they're currently uh, doing. Um, the machinery that the young lady is doing is probably nearly the high end. There's a few tractors around Kathmandu and, and a couple of other bigger cities, but certainly when you get into the more remote areas, uh, those uh, machines don't happen to work. The uh, interesting thing that when you look at uh, our aims and objectives of uh, um, both our organisations, there's some really strong similarities. And this is where when we started to have the conversations three or four years ago with um, uh, Rob and, and uh, Andrea, and then at that stage we brought in Subesh. Subesh was a, or is a student at uh, Federation Uni in Ballarat. Subesh was given the opportunity of uh, attending a number of uh, land care programs uh, in Victoria as well as uh, interstate uh, in gathering information so that we can put together a package to develop in Nepal. Our intention is about developing a land care model that we can uh, provide to this man who's uh, obviously looking for some hope and some direction and some survival for his future. Um, he happens to be in Gorkha. So, uh, you know, the area of Gorkha, of Lamjung, is the areas that we work a fair bit in. We've had requests to do some work in the Solar Kumbu region, which is the Everest region. Uh, and we want to be able to find the funds and the support to be able to take teams in to do some training to enable uh, both our organisations to work side by side in delivering the sort of things that we see as important for uh, the communities in which we work with, but also in delivering the, the aims and objectives that we have as organisations. Um, we don't do anything, as I said before, without a community development model. And, uh, you know, your organisation, our organisation is very much about this mandate of uh, what we do. It's about going and working with them. It's about understanding them. It's about building on what they have and then leaving them saying, we have done this ourselves. You know, we do not and will not go in there with a bucket of money. We will not go in there with, with a situation of saying, this is what you need and this is what we think you need. And therefore, this is what we're going to provide. But we will spend time with each organisation, each community, each partner that we have to ensure that uh, the relationship is strong, that it's sustainable, and that the work is done by our support working with the local community. So we would want to be able to explore uh, again uh, when we can and uh, when we get the additional resources that are required to have a, a land care model uh, in Nepal because we know that we have the entree with municipalities, with partners, uh, with uh, local people to give us the opportunity to share the skills and the knowledge that they want in a way that has some sustainable future. When you're greeted and when you leave Nepal, you always will have namaste as a, a, a blessing. And uh, so we would like to uh, conclude by saying namaste to you and the uh, opportunity for us to strengthen our partnership, to deliver the program and to, uh, to see our communities in Nepal grow will be a, uh, an amazing thing that we can do, do together with uh, Global Land Care. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I was given a limited time, so there's a limited time, uh, just to give you a bit of a thumbnail of Nepal, but at the same time, so the projects that we're doing and some vision about uh, where we would like to be in partnership with you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Namaste back to you, Graham. Thank you, Um